Located in Oakville, Ontario, Chris Vokes Memorial Park is a park named after Major General Christopher Vokes, a veteran who distinguished himself in World War II in the invasion of Italy and Germany, later moving to Oakville and passing away at the age of 80. Located in the center of the park is the Bronte Cenotaph. Built in 1983, the monument honors those who have lost their lives in the First and Second World War, as well as the Korean War. On the front is an inscription which states, A tribute to the dead, an admonition to the living, lest we forget. As you observe the memorial in its cenotaph, what you might find most interesting is that while the monument at its heart honors those who have passed in battle, no individual names are listed on its body. The attempt to remember these brave individuals is undercut then by the fact that the public does not know exactly who they are remembering and who they were. The Wars, written by Timothy Finley, details the life of a young man named Robert Frost, trudging through the trenches of World War I. The reader gains a sense of not only how horrific his situation is, but how history remembers him afterwards. Chris Folk's Memorial Park and the Bronte Cenotaph are significant landmarks and irrefutably a display of loss, a reminder of sacrifice, and a constant reminder in the community of gratuity and remembrance. Like with many Canadian monuments, we are told the phrase, lest we forget, time and time again. But our history textbooks seemingly do nothing but forget. We encapsulate the existence of thousands of brave men and women into the confines of a few years, the duration of a war, or multiple wars. We identify them by the horrors and atrocities they have suffered. They are only statistics on a bar graph, numbers dwindling as battles continue. Without their names or testimonies, this historic landmark has done what history has executed over and over again, the dehumanization and reduction of people to the matters of war and violence they have faced, rather than their personal identity and story. How do we remember people as people rather than by stats or by acts executed by their oppressors? Located in Yad Vashem is the Hall of Names. Part museum, part archive collecting pages of testimony, the memorial documents and preserves the memory of Holocaust victims, attempting to restore personal identity and brief life stories of the six million Jews murdered. Yad Vashem is a reminder to the visitor that today's members of society not only have the responsibility to educate and inform themselves, but to remember people as they were before and perhaps after the war, as people with personal identities and stories. Christopher Vokes, although attended school in Canada and fought with Canadian troops, was born in Armagh, Ireland on April 13, 1904 and came to Canada in 1910. He was a student at the McGill University and was awarded a Bachelor of Science. He retired from the military in 1959 and published his memoirs in 1985. Many may remember him as a commanding force leading troops through dangerous battle, but few may remember his admiration for his fellow soldiers or his relationship with his brother. As for the nameless people remembered by the Bronte Cenotaph, many will remember them as brave, courageous, and patriotic but few will remember them as people. Today, as they always have, war memorials symbolize remembrance. It's no different a case with Chris Vokes Memorial Park and the Bronte Cenotaph. At their core, they are both a reminder of the responsibility to honor one's memory in a way which preserves the victim's memory. As seen with Yad Vashem, the 21st century's interpretation of history and documentation has begun to move into an era where by honoring the memory of one, we are honoring the memory of thousands who have lost their lives serving their country. Like with Robert Frost in Finley's The Wars or Christopher Vokes, you may never truly understand the experience of thousands of soldiers and citizens dealing with the before, during, and aftermath of war unless you read their accounts, their testimonies, and listen to their stories.